What's up, guys? I'm Paul. This is Paul in Theology, it's Daily Devo with Trust in Jesus Ministries. We're back. We're talking uh, through Genesis. We've got through the entire, I guess, um, first kind of part. We're ending on the the. Um, we're about to end on the Tower of Babel, and then we'll start on the second part of Genesis. So we're getting to the the, the end of the first part of Genesis. We talked earlier about um, whenever we did the introduction of how God's promises are being kept. Like that's the, that's the whole idea of Genesis is that when God makes promises, he holds to them and he promised that he's going to save the world. He's going to uh, let man um, be with him again. And he's ever doing this through what he has uh, already accomplished that we've read through already. Um, He's keeping his promise. First off, he said he's going to save the world. Second, it says that he's going to never destroy the world by water again, by flood again. And he's done that. And so, yeah, we're getting to see his promises taken care of. And that's kind of what we're going to talk about today in chapter 10. It's called the Table of Nations. So this is the descendants of Noah and his three sons. Remember we talked about Toldots and the last one was the Toldot of Seth, and it ended with the genealogy of Noah. It, it kind of separated the genealogy, and then it had a story. It talked about the flood and what occurred. And then after all of that, it ended again with Noah to finish kind of the, the Toldot or the uh, the genealogy of Seth in that. And now we uh, have a new one, and this one is Noah's. And so after Noah, we talk about what occurs with the the genealogy or what occurs with the descendants of Noah. We have uh, a lot going um coming from his three sons and that uh God is is reinstituting or recreating or redeeming the world through Noah. And so if you haven't checked out chapter 10, go ahead and read it. it might be a little boring, man, but you know, just read through it and see see what it has to say and then uh come back and we'll we'll talk about some of the things that are in it. But uh, yeah, if you haven't read it, stop the tape. If you have, we're going to go ahead and jump into it. It says, these are the generations of Noah, uh, his sons. Man, he had three sons, Ham, Sham, and Japheth. And then those sons had sons, and those sons had sons, and those sons had sons. And from those were the nations of the world. Um, we have the the uh, the uh, kind of like the coastal peoples. We have the uh, Semitic peoples. And then we have the African peoples. Um, and so we have uh, a, a lot of people that come from, well, every everybody comes from uh, this nation, comes from this. And so, yeah, it's pretty cool to see how they show out. And uh, one important thing that stands out to me, I think, because the, the question is, what is the author trying to convey? What is he trying to say to the peoples? What is he actually saying? And he's saying that all people come from the line of Noah. And so in that way, we have a kinsmanship, a brotherhood. And that line of Noah is the image of God because we went and uh, talked about, I think it was last episode, where um, it says that you shouldn't murder because man is made in the image of God and that a reckoning is required. And so this image of God is continued on through Noah to all of us who are gone through Noah. All um, people are parentage through Noah. And so I think that's uh, that's one thing that the other's trying to convey. But <clears throat> excuse me, another thing that uh, he's conveying is um, he sets off a couple of different people, and one of those main ones that I just want to talk about is Nimrod. Uh, Nimrod, they said, was a great hunter before the Lord, uh, and they even made a little, I guess, an idiom because of how great he was. And what he did was establish these cities and these cities that he established, they come from the line of Ham, but uh, which is, is a Canaanite, which is uh, um, even more so the idea of the ungodly line. Um, we we see in the curse that uh, Noah tried to put on, tried to put on his uh, his grandson, Canaan, and we see kind of a fulfillment in that, in that line or that walk because Nimrod, whom uh, was before was a great hunter before the Lord is the founder of Shinar and Babylon and Assyria and all of these uh, nations that rose up to defy God uh, that rose up to, to, um, 
to do evil. And so Babel as well as one of those cities. And uh, we're going to come to find out that it's before the Lord. The idea might be um, um, come from the idea of Babel before the Lord God saw it, you know. And so we have this uh, this guy here who is building cities. It's also something that Cain did. His ancestry, we saw, were building cities. We're building cities. And not to say that building cities is wrong, because we, we talked about in that episode specifically that um, great accomplishments come from those who are living wrong lives. Uh, we can see that, is that great accomplishments come from those who are, are living lives against the, the truth of, of God's word. But it is still sad to see the direction of Nimrod's heart. He's building cities. While we have Seth, it says that his son called upon the name of the Lord. People began to call upon the name of the Lord. He's trying to build people that follow God. He's trying to build people who seek after the Lord, to love and desire the Lord. And so it's um, it's, a, it's a sad contrast between the two. Again, it is nothing against building a city, but it is something to say that you're building your kingdom rather than building God's kingdom. So what is this saying about God? Well, uh, I think it's saying that, that God blessings will be fulfilled. We're going to see that, that uh, they get fulfilled because God accomplishes them. Because most of the time that's what happened, man. We, we, we mess up. And God fix, but God's blessings happen. They're fulfilled and he's faithful to do those things. So I think that's what we see here is the faithfulness of God and the grace of God being shown that he would allow people. That's what it talks about. Like this is the generations after the flood and so that he would allow these things to continue on despite our sin. So that's, that's a wonderful thing. What's to say about man? I think it says that, dude, we do our best to try and, do what we want out of what we see God is good with, but then everything else we want to do our own thing. And I'm saying this on the back of the story that we're about to read next time, which is the tower of Babel. Cause we see that it's accomplished. It says, and these are how the uh, family scattered, the tribe scattered, their language is scattered, which that's the thing. You're like, well, I, th I thought they all had one language because uh, we see that in the next uh, story, which is of Babel, and that's how God confused the languages and spread the people out. But I think this, there's a strategic way, reason for the author placing this before the, the story of Babel, and then um, the story of Babel right before the uh, story of Abram. And we'll talk about that when we get there. But I do want to say that that is why it says um, these languages were different according to the languages, according to their um, um, boundaries according to their, uh, their, uh, I'm trying to think of the word, their lands. And that's it. According to the boundaries, their lands, their families and their clans. And so, um, b because this is actually something that happens after the, uh, Babel. And so, uh, yeah, we see that these people get scattered across the world, but they don't do it on their own. They have to be, um, persuaded through the punishment that God places upon them. Uh, that's, that's why I say we just do, we do what we want as part of what we think is good. They're, they're having kids filling the world, but God said to fill the earth. He didn't say stay in one spot. And so in order for them to move to all these different areas, man, God had to uh, confuse the languages and spread them out. And then <clears throat> how can we apply these truths to our lives, man? Well, first off, uh, what are you pursuing? Are you seeking to build your own kingdom? Are you seeking to build God's kingdom? Check right now, man. Look at your heart and see what you're pursuing. And then second, man, are you pursuing God with all of your heart? Or are you only doing what you want and then leaving the rest out? It's not a buffet. You can't grab something you want and then leave what you don't. The truth of God is 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 uh, is whole. It's complete. Man, I appreciate you guys for listening, man. And uh, yeah, we're going to be on the Tower of Babel next. The Tower of Babel next, man. It's real cool to go through some of these stories that you hear as a child and then and then uh, read through them and see what they 
uh, have to offer for us today as we've grown. Appreciate you guys for listening again, and I'll see you in the next episode.